In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a plugin called Telescope. So if you're following along with the NeoVim from Scratch series, then you can head over to this repository and check out the 07 Telescope branch. Um, and you'll be able to follow along with all of the code that uh, I'll show you in this video. Uh, the other thing I recommend you do is go over to the telescope.nvim repository here, and I'll leave links for all these repos in the description. And what you can do is you can go through all of this documentation. Telescope can do a lot of things. And I guess if you don't already know what Telescope is, Telescope is a fuzzy finder, um, and it's centered around a lot of modularity. So Telescope is super customizable, uh, too customizable for me to explain all of the customizations in one video, but I'm gonna try to give you enough to where you can get started and get an idea for how much you can do with this. So anyway, let us uh, let me give you a demo of what it actually does before I show you uh, before I show you how to install it and all that, and how to configure it and all that stuff. All right, so let's get started. Um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a look, and we just went into command mode down here. It's gonna give you a command called telescope. Uh, we're gonna press tab, and you can see all of the things that we can search over here. Uh, what I'm gonna start with is gonna be find files, because this is one of the most useful ones in my opinion. Uh, you'll notice that we have a results window here, we have a file preview, and then we have this little uh, input box here. The input box is essentially a fuzzy finder, so if I start typing plugins, it'll kind of you know pull that one up and show you where all of those letters that you typed are kind of highlighted. And then we can press enter on it and then head over to that file really easily. So we can do that again, jump over to init.lua, and just you can move throughout your project very easily using that. Um, another thing that you can do is live grep. So we can do live grep, and then we can search for like all of the to-dos in our project, and then just jump over to them, or we can search for um, everywhere in our project where we use the text LSP. So this isn't just like docu like it's not just symbols, like text symbols or whatever. It's um, also just anywhere where the you know, anywhere where the text LSP is, it's gonna go and look for it, right? Um, there's another way to just get symbols if you want that as well. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna go over is, let's see, for instance, uh, let's go jump back here. Let's go to, well, I'll, I'll go there first and I'll show you because the next thing is gonna be LSP related stuff. So if you have LSP set up, what you can do, and I set up in LSP in the video before this one, what we can do is we can do telescope LSP and then we can do go down to definitions. And so there's only gonna be one definition for this when we press enter, right? And so this is gonna take us to the CMP. So what I did was uh, the same as if I press GD on top of this, um, is the same as if I do LSP definitions. And then you can see that we're requiring this CMP module here at the top, right? And so maybe I wanna see all the references to this. So what I can do, what I could do is just GR and it'll bring up a quick fix list, right? And so that's you know one way that you could get it done. Um, but what we could also do is we could use telescope and we could do telescope um, LSP references. And then we can kind of go through it like this, right? So that's another way to do it. Anyway, Telescope has a lot of built-ins for LSP and a few other things. There's also um, one that I'm gonna have to mention is gonna be Telescope Planets, right? Um, telescope Planets kind of confuses me because um, there's there's all these planets, but there's the moon, but there's no, Pluto's not here. So I don't understand why the moon's here and why Pluto isn't here. Um, I guess technically Pluto's not a planet, but if you were gonna include the moon, I don't know why, Anyway, but yeah, so anyway, you can click on one of these and then you can see, um, you know, it gives you a little output down there. I think what that's really useful for is if you go and look at that code inside of the telescope repo, it might show you like a really simple example um, for how to, you know, implement your own picker if you're interested in doing something like that. All right, so let's uh, take a look at one other thing, I think, because there's a ton of things that this can do. I don't want to go over everything. The other, there is some good uh, Git stuff too, so like things you can do with Git, and there's other, I think there's like Git extensions and things like that too. But for instance, we could do like telescope Git branches, and then you can just search for a particular branch that you want in here and check it out, right? It also gives you this nice preview here of like all of this, um, you know, all of the uh, commit hashes and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, um, that's just some stuff uh, that you can search over. Now let's also talk about 
how to uh, change the look because the look always kind of looks the same and maybe you want some variety in the way that your search menus look. So now let's do something like telescope, find files, and now we're gonna pass a theme. I only know of three themes, um, but the first theme is obviously like that floating window. That's the default. Um, let's try out a couple other ones. So we have Ivy as a theme. So Ivy kind of opens up the menu down here at the bottom, so you could do it that way. Um, there's another theme called drop, drop down like this, and you can get a drop down. And um, I'm gonna show you in a minute too how you can get rid of the file preview as well. So maybe you don't really, maybe the file preview to you adds a little bit too much noise. Uh, you can get rid of that as well. And then the last one I'll show you is cursor and like that. And I don't think this one will be super useful for most people, but what it might be good for is if you have like LSP code actions and you want to bind it to some key or something like that, I think that would be uh, potentially the best for that. Okay, so that's some different themes. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is I have a couple key binds because I think telescope is probably best used with key binds. I don't think you want to come down here, type telescope, and then do find files and all that kind of good stuff, right? You probably just want to press a key and have it work. So let's see. So leader F, what I have, and I told you that I would show you how to do it without, um, without, uh, without the previewer. And actually, I think I have previewer set to 10 here. I actually need to set that to false. So let's do that right now. Okay, and I'm gonna reopen this. Okay, so now if we go to key maps again, and then we go take a look at this, um, the old way would be just to do regular, like how it looks in the command down here when I do uh, telescope find files, right? And so that's one way to do it. But another way you could do it, and you could type this all out too. You could type out uh, Lua, whoops, Lua, and then require and all that kind of good stuff. But you know, if you're gonna do all this, you definitely don't wanna type out all this, right? You definitely don't wanna type out this every single time that you search for files. So that's why we're binding it to a key. So now if I press leader F, I get this nice find files thing and I can uh, ignore the, the previewer. So I can just get my files and I don't get that extra preview noise. So that's one thing you can do. There's other things that you can pass this, like wind blend and all different other kinds of stuff, but I just figured this one would be useful for the most people. Um, then also we could bind it to something like a control, uh, con like a control binding, right? So we can do something like control T and we can live grep through the text again, right? So <clears throat> that's like another one. All right, and you know, feel free to, you know, set up the bindings however you want and, you know, change themes for different things that you're looking for or whatever else, right? So it's like totally up to you how you want it to look. You could probably even, if you were sufficiently motivated, go and write your own theme and do all that kind of good stuff. Um, I'm pretty happy with the ones that are built in for the most part. Okay, so now let's talk about how to actually install it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up wherever we keep our plugins and I use Packer, so this should be familiar if you use Packer. If you don't use Packer and you want to, I have a video on how to uh, install plugins with Packer. Uh, it should be in the same playlist as this video is in. All right, and so you can see that we're just doing use NVIM telescope, telescope.nvim just like this. So that's how we're pulling it in. And the next thing that we'll do is we'll go take a look at uh, the configuration file. So this is the configuration file that I have. Um, this is the setup right here. You'll notice that I have all of these key bindings here. Pretty much all of them are the default key bindings. Um, the reason that I put the default key bindings is just so that I can remember that they exist because I'll forget. So I can come back and like reference this file. Um, so, you know, you can do all these things and you can set and I put these here too so that you can go and like look, right? So like if you want to change control, control N and P, by the way, are like the normal move to the next selection, move to the previous selection, but I swapped them for control J and K and now control N and P actually go through history. So if I open up um, find files again and if I do, or if I just do, yeah, 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 control P, you can see all of the history of the things that I put in there. And same with control N will move you forwards. Uh, control C will close, down and up are the same. Uh, one interesting one is if we do find files like this and then we do control Q, we'll actually just send it to a quick fix list. So if you know you wanna do that and then maybe open something else up or whatever, you know, you could do that. 
Uh, yeah, so this is just some key bindings that you can pass it, and this is pa passed in mappings. I is for when you're in insert mode, and N is for when you're in normal mode, because you'll notice inside of telescope, um, if I press escape, I actually go into normal mode. So I can press like GG and go to the top, or Shift G and go to the bottom. So now we have like the, and I'm just pressing J and K instead of Control J and K to go up and down. If I press I, I'll go back in insert mode, and I'll have to do Control K to go up, Control J to go down, and you know, with the benefit that I can now insert text, right? Okay, so moving on, there are pickers and extensions. Um, I don't really have any custom pickers that I personally add, but I'll try to show you a pretty cool extension during this video. I think um, for a telescope though, there's really not much else I wanna show you to get started. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just kinda show you a cool extension so that you can you know, try this out if you want to. It'll be useful for people who, I think mostly who are on Linux. Um, but what this will allow you to do is preview images in, in telescope. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'll show you how to do that now. So let's go back and we'll open up our plugins and we'll just jump down here. And you'll notice that we need pop-up, plenary, and telescope. So make sure that you have those. And then we can install this extension here. So we're gonna change that to use, tab that over, save that. And we just installed the telescope media files.envim um, plugin. Now that's a plugin, but it's, it, it's a NeoVim plugin, but it's a telescope extension. So that's, that's the difference, right? And now what we're going to do is we're just going to head on over to Lua user telescope and we'll just read the rest of the readme here. There's not much to do to get this set up. So we're just going to copy this, um, paste that in there. Uh, one thing I will do is I already have an instance of telescope, so I don't need to require it again. I'm doing that up here, right? So what I'm going to do is let's make this bigger. I'm just going to, whoops, get rid of all that. And we'll just put that back there. Okay, so that's how we're gonna load this extension. So we're gonna do telescope, load extension, media files. And then if you want to, you can pass some uh, configuration for the extension down here in extensions. So we can do that and then we'll just tab it over really fast. Okay, so this is us adding an extension, um, the media files extension in this case. There's tons of extensions for different plugins and things like that but this is the one that I think is, it's probably one of my favorites, right? So let's go to my blog where there's a lot of images. We'll just open up, uh, I don't know, just some file. And then what we can do from here is we can do telescope media files. And whoops, actually you won't be able to see it because it's too small of a window. So let's do that again. And now you can see that I have a bunch of images uh, showing up in our picker here. And so to get that to work, uh, likely you're gonna need to be on Linux. It might support in the future, or even now, I'm not sure, it might support iTerm. But right now I know that it supports uh, Linux, but make sure that you have UberZug installed uh, for image support. So you can, that's a Python uh, package, so you can install it likely with just pip install and then UberZug, right? Okay, so that was just a cool extension. You don't obviously have to use that extension if you don't want to, but I just figured some people might be interested in that. Um, and maybe it'll, you know, inspire you to go look at other extensions or potentially make one of your own. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said, all of the links to all these repositories are going to be in the description of this video. Um, if you do like the video, then you can consider sponsoring it over on GitHub or supporting me over on Patreon. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.